Hello scene peepers. Welcome back to our channel. I hope you guys have been enjoying our video so far. Today I would like to explain another Korean movie named Recall. This is a mystery thriller movie that was released in 2021. Starring two Korean top stars, Seo Yeji and Kim Kang Woo. The movie is ranked 15th out of all Korean films released in South Korea in 2021, making it one of the most popular Korean movies released that year. If you are a fan of mystery thriller movies, you might want to put this piece of artwork into your watching lists. Spoilers ahead, take care, and enjoy. The story follows a woman who loses her memories and begins to have some visions about the future. The film begins with a scene where Kim Soo Jin became conscious after being hospitalized for an unknown amount of time. Although all parts of her body can function normally, Soo Jin loses her memories and fails to recognize her husband. On the other hand, her husband, Lee Ji Hoon, is shown as a kind and lovely figure in the movie. He takes care of Soo Jin, helps her clean herself, and sometimes accompanies her to enjoy the nice weather in the hospital park. Because Soo Jin loses her memories, she has to learn about herself and the people around her again. She reads the notebook that Ji Hoon gives to her and learns a few facts about herself. Before Soo Jin is discharged from the hospital, Ji Hoon is shown cleaning and decorating their house to welcome Soo Jin back. He then fetches Soo Jin from the hospital and takes her to their home. The couple is living in a fancy apartment building on the 10th floor. Ji Hoon asks Soo Jin to wait downstairs while he takes their things to their apartment. He prepares a cake to welcome his wife. However, Soo Jin is too curious to wait. Later, she enters the elevator and plans to go to the 10th floor. Suddenly, the apartment's electricity is off, leaving Soo Jin trapped in the elevator alone. It looks like she is claustrophobic. Ji Hoon tries to find her. The electricity is on again and Soo Jin is found fainted in the elevator. Her husband takes her home and suggests she go back to the hospital but she refuses. The couple later talks about their immigration plan to Canada while staring at a Vermilion Lakes painting hanging on their living room's wall. Ji Hoon describes how beautiful that place is and they both can't wait to move there. The next day, Ji Hoon is shown attending an interview at Canada's embassy as part of their immigration process. Meanwhile, Soo Jin, decides to take a walk outside. In the elevator, she sees her first vision. She sees a vision in which the little girl she talks to in the elevator got hit by a truck while crossing the road. The vision makes her confused. While taking a brief walk around their apartment complex, she sees her vision is about to come true. The little girl was hit by a bicycle and fell. Then, the truck comes to the little girl. Soo Jin runs to save the little girl and almost gets hit by the truck. Fortunately, Ji Hoon comes to save her and no accident happens. The couple goes home together and treats their wounds. The next day, there are two detectives shown analyzing a stealing case in an abandoned construction site. At this time, Soo Jin, who is sitting in the park near their apartment building, reads the notebook Ji Hoon gives her and suddenly finds out that she has a drawing talent. She later sees another vision of that little girl again. She sees the girl's mom turn on the stove and there will be a blow in that little girl's house. She calls Ji Hoon, asking him to come home. The vision comes true again and Soo Jin sees the house blowing. Soo Jin and Ji Hoon later go to the hospital for a consultation session with a doctor. The doctor said that she may experience hallucinations because of her brain trauma. Soo Jin insists that she can see the future and she is so upset that no one believes her. In the hospital, she sees the little girl and her brother, feeling relieved that both of them are safe. On the other hand, Ji Hoon felt frustrated with the situation. The couple later goes to the beach to spend time together. Ji Hoon said that Soo Jin can swim and enjoy going to the beach to spend a lovely summer time. Ji Hoon accompanies Soo Jin in playing in the water. The next day, Soo Jin awakes after having a nightmare of seeing herself fall from a high place as someone pushes her. The two detectives come to her house and ask her about her bruises, indicating that she might be a domestic violence victim. She denies the accusation and says that there is nothing wrong with her marriage. However, the two detectives feel weird after seeing her wedding photo. The groom is usually standing on the right side of the bride, not on the left side. After the two detectives leave, Soo Jin goes out to buy a birthday present for her husband. In the elevator, she meets a teenage girl and gets another vision of the future. She sees that the teenage girl will be choked by a guy with a scar on his chin. She runs after the girl, begging her not to enter the apartment or something bad will happen to her. Soo Jin later learns that the man with a scar whom she sees in her vision is that girl's dad. The teenage girl goes out again. This time, Soo Jin follows her. On the road, she meets her workmate and goes to a drawing school where she teaches before she got in an accident. Despite having worked there for so many years, she has no memories of it. Her workmate shows her table in that drawing school. 
Su Jin later learns from her workmate that she used to love hiking and her husband somehow feels jealous about this and is often suspicious that she has another man. She also finds her husband's name card and decides to go to her husband's office. However, the office is now closed. Ji Hoon's architecture company has been bankrupt since months ago. At night when Su Jin gets home, she confronts her husband. She can't understand why her husband never told her about her previous workplace and wonder whether their immigration plan is because of the bankruptcy. Meanwhile, the two detectives who are investigating the stealing case in the abandoned construction site find out that Ji Hoon visited that abandoned place and start to wonder why he did that. Su Jin later receives her things from the previous workplace which were sent by her workmate. She sees some of her pictures with another man and feels surprised. On her way to the 10th floor, she meets the teenage girl's dad in the elevator and gets another vision. She sees the man chokes the girl until dead. Su Jin then threatens the man that she will report him to the police if something happens to the girl. The man choked her in the elevator and Su Jin sees another vision, this time there is another man who hit the girl's dad and then dragged a suitcase. Meanwhile, the two detectives go to the construction site to investigate the stealing case. They find out that Ji Hoon is the one in charge of the construction. Later, Su Jin tells Ji Hoon about her vision. She wants to report to the police but Ji Hoon stops her. At midnight, Su Jin, who is anxious, wakes up and goes to apartment 704. She hears a girl screaming but she is too afraid to do something. When the door is about to open, she hides. While hiding in the dark, she sees a man carrying baggage from the apartment. She can't see the man's face, but she recognizes the dropped necklace and assume that there is a murder case that happened in Unit 704 and there is a body in the luggage. That night, Ji Hoon also goes out. The apartment officer handed him Su Jin things which she left in the elevator. Ji Hoon later also sees pictures that portray Su Jin with another man. The next day, Su Jin visits her workmate, asking her about what type of person her husband is. Her workmate told her that her husband is abusive and often hits her because he is suspicious that Su Jin has another man. It is also revealed that before losing her memories, Su Jin wants to divorce. After going back to her apartment, she asks the security about the box she dropped yesterday. The security told her that the box is now with her husband while trying to search for the box in their house. She finds the necklace she saw last night in her husband's jacket. She learns that her husband has murdered the man who lives in 704. Su Jin later reports this case to the police. Ji Hoon, who tracks her phone, goes to the police station to stop her. However, he is too late. Then, the police checked Unit 704 in their apartment building. The unit has been vacant for quite a long time and no one is living there. Ji Hoon takes Su Jin home and says that they will move to Canada in two days. After her husband leaves, she goes out. This time, she meets a man and gets a vision that the man will be getting hit by a money lender. She follows the man and finds out that the man is the real Lee Ji Hoon, her real husband, and he will be murdered at the abandoned construction site. Meanwhile, the one who is now living with her is not Lee Ji Hoon, but Kim Sun Woo. The two detectives finally solve the stealing case but the Mandor tells them that there is something suspicious about Kim Sun Woo going to the construction site. Su Jin goes to the construction site to stop the murder. She sees Sun Woo kills and drags Ji Hoon's body. She confronts Sun Woo and threatens to stab him if he comes closer to her. The police later come to the construction site but it turns out that what Su Jin sees is just a delusion. Nobody in the bricks. Nobody in the luggage either. However, the police who are suspicious of Kim Sun Woo don't want to stop. They found the body in the brick and arrested Kim Sun Woo. It is revealed that Kim Sun Woo is Su Jin's adoptive brother. He admits that he killed Ji Hoon and often comes back to the construction site because he is afraid that the police will find Ji Hoon's body. He also plans to kill Su Jin so that he can claim her insurance money. After talking briefly to Sun Woo in the investigation room, Su Jin goes home. She sees the little girl and the teenage girl in her vision again and finds out that they are herself in the past. She didn't see the future, but she sees her memories. Her brother has always been trying to protect her, even killing their dad who nearly choked her to death years ago. Su Jin later visits her actual house where she used to live with Ji Hoon. It is shown later in the movie that Ji Hoon is still alive. Police also learned that after forensic investigation, the body found at the construction site is not Ji Hoon. The movie later shows us that several months ago, Ji Hoon kills the money lender at the construction site and throws the body into the melted cement. Su Jin saw this. When Ji Hoon is about to kill Su Jin too, she hits her husband's head, making him suffer a head injury. Sun Woo came to the construction site, threw the body into the melted cement too, assuming Ji Hoon was dead. At that time, Su Jin jumped, attempting to suicide. At present, 
Ji-hoon, who is still alive, tries to burn Soo-jin together with their whole house. Sun-woo who manages to escape from the police station comes to save Soo-jin but he gets stabbed by Ji-hoon. Police later come and arrest Ji-hoon. Sun-woo protects Soo-jin from the fire. Soo-jin said to him that she now remembers everything. At the end of the movie, it is revealed that Sun-woo died protecting his sister. He also had prepared everything for Soo-jin to migrate to Canada which has always been their dream since they were young. This movie has lots of flashback scenes. The twisted ending is kinda amusing to watch too. Who would think that her husband in the first part of the movie is her adopted brother? What do you think about the movie, peepers? Leave your comments below. Subscribe to this channel for more movie recaps. Please like and turn on notifications to support this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.